Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's Lee Guy Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. And don't look now, but we have actual games in 2024 on the new map, on the new rift. Yes, the games are completely meaningless, but at least it's some of the star players from the LCK for the season opener, the new four fun event over in Korea. Go get yourself a snack, pat on the back, treat yourself. You made it. You survived the off season. We are officially here into the new year. And yes, it might be a meaningless game, but the LCK is delivering and showing the rest of the regions around the world how you do a four fun event and how you have a good time for the audience, for those fans. LCK season opener done right. And, you know, it's clear they did a good job marketing. It's for fun when you have, I love this concept of five junglers versus five top laners. It's all about role supremacy and which one is the most important. We learned that jungle diff is the most important thing as we'll get to how these games played out, but they did a perfect mix match of it being just hilarious, ridiculous with all these guys, obviously role swapping every time, but you still have such a high mechanical ceiling for all these players that you still had some high quality stuff. Yeah, that was really what it was about. Of course, there was sloppiness. Of course, there was for fun and sure. you know head head scratching type of things going on. But you knew that this was all in an environment that was supposed to create these type of matches, these type of moments. But then, as you said, you do have that raw talent, that skill, of course, of the LCK. And even in these individual moments, even in these scenarios that might never come up, of course, in a traditional uh, professional match, we're seeing it play out and we're seeing it go through with the, the players that you love to see. This was a great thing. And I think that the best thing about it, I love right out of the gates, is how they set this up, right? Doing obviously with the teams at the individual roles, but having it say, hey, T1, fresh off the world championships. You guys are at the top. You guys are going to go through your roles and get your squads. And nobody told Captain Faker that he has to actually pick Smite when he's playing jungle. Bro, bro must be playing Wild Rift, which apparently, actually, I'm going to take that back because we find out he's not even on his mobile phone. What's going on with this one? He doesn't need the Smite, my man. It is the rest of the power of Team Midland, and he had his faith placed in something I think a couple of us I'll, I'll say off the wall geniuses have come up with and speculated on seeing Chovy in that top lane on that Cassante dishing out the damage yeah I mean we've seen both him and Faker play Cassante mid to better levels than a lot of the top laners in the league so absolutely that was no surprise I know people are always frothing at the prospect of a split pushing Chovy where he can just ignore his team and CS to his heart's content maybe sometime future later on in his career but he's still one of the best mid laners in the world at the moment but uh, a lot of obviously the main highlight for this aside from all the fun guys role swapping was seeing the new map seeing all these new jungle paths we got to see barrel riding through on that first riff herald you knew it would be him and of course i expected him to be playing ramus i don't know about that one but it was absolutely wonky to see that one come through and i still think it's gonna look a little bit janky and feel odd seeing that in your games, but absolutely you can see it even in this four fun match. The strategic element, the advantage that you can get, getting that killer in the mid lane, getting that tower, these type of things gonna be interesting. The second thing I immediately noticed seeing these changes, the evolution of the game of League of Legends, and of course the mainstay of all these years of League of Legends, Faker in the mid lane, it was that immediate you know, acknowledgement of how he has stayed at the top of the game, been an elite player, always in the conversation throughout the massive changes that have gone through year after year after year in this game. It's it's not the same game if you go look at that first world's run for Faker of the Boys. It is so much more complicated, so much going on. We're we're one or two seasons away from you know legit Power Ranger level ups where they're gonna be you're gonna be piloting the Rift Herald versus the Dragon versus Baron's all gonna come in and you got Transformers meets Power Rangers. I, I can't wait for the Mechazord Baron versus Mechazord Elder Dragon fights. They will be legendary down the mid lane in North America, at least. But for this event in the LCK, you know, seeing that, you know, just easing into, at the very least, these new changes coming through in this type of four fun environment, I thought was a nice little dose, little splash in the water for everybody with these new changes at the professional level. 
So the main hi uh, headline besides, again, seeing the new Rift was Team Jungle popping off. They had the full, you know, draw that they had to do. They had to play three games. It was still best of one to win, but they absolutely dominated all three of these games. Owner, Mr. Captain, played that Kindred super try hard in game one, and then he said, ah, that's too much. Let me have some fun and roll swap a little. He gets dumpstered by Chovy in a 1v1, but... He gives him the thumbs up, a little bit of respect out of him. But seeing him topside jungle across the board. But the tournament MVP is a rookie, Mr. Lucid, who piloted mid lane all three games. Akali, Yone, Akali. And he, this rookie, that's not technically his debut, but if I'm Showmaker, I'm sweating. This guy's coming for his job. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're going to be seeing some roll swapping mid jungle type of action going on with damn one kia this year yes lucid the rookie making an immediate impact immediate statement to the lck even in a for fun environment type of thing seeing those skills seeing that competition my man you gotta be excited this is the hype that we have been talking about with this player for for a while now and a lot of people why they were so okay with this type of transition of power for damn one kia to move over from canyon to lucid you see it with that raw skill in this one. I know how much of that raw skill is going to be translatable to the champions. You really are going to be mostly piloting in the jungle. Sure, it's different, but seeing him play like this, seeing him look comfortable with the rest of these LCK, you know, pretty much all stars almost all around, looks really good for Dan Wong Keith. And I know, again, meaningless games, but we were already hyped about this kid coming in. And we look no further than Faker in T1, seeing what new fresh talent coming in can do to revitalize someone's career you think showmakers not going to be excited to have this rookie coming in who looks like he could potentially immediately be battling for that top three top four jungler in the lck I i'm looking forward to seeing a laughing jokey happy showmaker in 2024 we talked about it so many times with him, I think more so than anybody else, especially anybody else in the LCK. I think having that motivation, having that happiness, having, you know, that in locked in type of persona from someone like Showmaker is an immediate level up in what type of production you're getting and the type of threat that you can represent to the rest of the league. Going to be a good sign if he's in that type of mood and a player like Lucid jumping into the squad, bringing in that young energy, bringing in that type of fresh debut absolutely can be something to look forward to all in all for this event though from the pre-game modes to the mundo dodgeball the race across the rift having t1 as the captains the premise of all these uh positional players you know jungle versus mid everything like that take notes other regions because to me across the board this this is a sweeping success for a preseason event to also introduce all the changes that are coming into the new year I think one of the things that, you know, is as well going to go under the radar here that is a nice thing from the fan perspective, even an analyst and, you know, whatever, is you're looking at pl new players, new faces, new jerseys, all these type of things, and getting this little bit of an introduction to it is something a little bit nicer, I think, than just that fresh, cold start right into the real games of the regular season. Seeing someone like Peanut in that Hanwell Life jersey makes you think, oh, man, looking pretty good, looking snazzy. Look natural. Be Looks like we've seen it before. Exactly, and he's going to be that level up for this team. It makes you excited for the year to come, for these type of matches, to see that player in that jersey, see them playing the game, these type of things. They're small little factors, but don't underestimate how much of them can lead into just that general excitement and buzz building around your split to start. And most importantly, you could tell the players were having fun doing this. That's always the most important for these events. I feel like we've seen some, especially in the LCS, where it, it feels like they're forced to be there. Riot said, we're doing this game. You got to have some fun. And yeah, they'll laugh a little. But across the board, it looked like most of the guys were having a hoot on the Rift today. Yeah, and I don't know whether that's, you know, part of the format and just how much it is and how much you really can't take anything in this regard seriously type of thing that plays into it or the familiarity due to the solo queue environment and, you know, the nature between these organizations, but absolutely different than when we see anything of this type of nature, all-star event or mixed type of squad things that we see LCS or LEC in the past where the players are, again, strangers to each other type of thing everybody looked like best buds in this type of one going on where else are you gonna see faker 
sitting alongside Chovy. Oh man, it's good. It's it's hard to flame a guy uh, or try hard when they're playing a role and a champion that they've hardly ever played, which is what the support team looked like, kind of, you know, three fifths oh, of them. No. I, yeah, that was not good. I'm pretty sure Kyria and Barrel. Kyria, because he's playing everything, he is that wild genius mastermind. And then Barrel, because he's shot calling for all these champions, he knows exactly how they gotta be played. That support game versus the junglers was absolutely chaos right out of the gates. Just makes me more excited for the splits to actually kick off. Less than a week away from some of these major regions finally teeing up the 2024 spring split. But that is it today for Liga Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.